eukaryotic cells, unlike prokaryotic cells, are those cells that contain a nucleus as well as other membrane-bound organelles. And eukaryotic cells include animal cells and plant cells, as well as protists and fungi. And in this lecture, we're going to focus on the structure of the eukaryotic cell. We're going to discuss different types of organelles that exist within that eukaryotic cell. And let's begin with the outermost structure that every single eukaryotic cell has. It's the cell membrane. So basically, enclosing the entire cell and everything found inside that cell is a semi-permeable phospholipid bilayer, a cell membrane, that plays a role in cell transport. It basically allows things into the cell and out of the cell. It also functions in cell communication as well as protecting the cell from outside sources of harm. Now other types of eukaryotic cells, not all, but some eukaryotic cells, for example, Plant cells also contain an additional second protecting barrier known as the cell wall. The cell wall protects plant cells and it also gives them the shape and structure. Now let's move on to basically the organelle that defines the eukaryotic cell known as the nucleus. The nucleus is basically an organelle that contains the genetic information and the nucleus contains its own phospholipid bilayer that is called the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane to differentiate it from the cell membrane. The nuclear membrane contains nuclear pores, very small openings that allow certain things into and out of that nucleus. Now at the center, at the heart of our nucleus is a region, a specialized region known as the nucleolus and the nucleus Nucleolus is the region where we synthesize incomplete ribosomes. The ribosomes that end up being in this region, the endoplasmic reticulum, or as free ribosomes found inside the cytosol, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So let's move on to this region here. So we have the cell membrane. This is our nucleus, the nuclear envelope that contains those nuclear pores, as well as our DNA that is found inside the nucleus. And this is our region known as the nucleolus. Now let's move on to region number four and region number five. Together, these two regions are known as the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, just outside the nucleus are a series of maze-like membranes called the endoplasmic reticulum or simply the ER and we have two types. We have the rough endoplasmic reticulum that contains these dots and this smooth endoplasmic reticulum shown in region 5 that lacks those dots. So the endoplasmic reticulum right next to our nucleus contains ribosomes embedded in our membrane of that ER and this gives it a granular appearance under the microscope and that's exactly why we call it the rough ER because it contains those ribosomes inside the membrane of the ER. Now, what exactly is the function, the purpose of our ER? So basically the ER, the rough endoplasmic reticulum functions to synthesize our proteins. It synthesizes the proteins that end up either being secreted from the cell or end up in the cell membrane of our cell. So basically, we see that the nuclear envelope and the membrane of our ER are jointed. They're connected in these regions. And that's exactly why once our nucleolus synthesizes those incomplete ribosomes, those ribosomes can then be placed inside this ER to basically embed the ribosomes inside the membrane of the ER and then those ribosomes can synthesize our proteins. 
Now, what about this section, the smooth ER shown by region 5? This region also contains these membranes, but they do not contain ribosomes. And so that means this smooth ER isn't directly involved in synthesizing proteins. Instead, the smooth ER functions to produce lipids, our fats, as well as to detoxify toxins and drugs. Now, the next section we're going to examine is region number six. This is known as the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi complex, or simply the Golgi. It's named after the scientists who came up, who first noticed this type of structure within our cell. So basically what happens is once our proteins are synthesized within our ER, then they travel into the Golgi apparatus. And the Golgi apparatus is a series of membrane bound sacs that functions as packaging and sorting center of our cell. It packages, sorts, as well as modifies proteins before they're actually secreted by that cell. Now proteins that leave our Golgi apparatus once they are modified leave in little sections little structures known as secretory vesicles and these are shown by these blue vesicles here so once our protein is modified for example we add some type of sugar onto the protein it leaves the Golgi apparatus inside a vesicle and the reason it stays inside the vesicle is to protect the structure of of our protein so that vesicle can then basically go onto the membrane and the protein can either remain in the membrane of the cell or it can secrete itself outside that cell now we also have ribosomes that aren't actually attached to the membrane of our endoplasmic reticulum and these ribosomes are known as free ribosomes. They are shown in this region. These two regions are our free ribosomes. So ribosomes are not organelles because they do not have any type of membrane. These ribosomes are simply structures. So ribosomes that are found in the cytosol, which is region number 14, it's this clear region shown on the entire cell. So we have ribosomes that are found in the cytosol and which are not bound to any type of membrane are called free ribosomes and they function to also synthesize protein, but these proteins synthesized by the free ribosomes end up staying within our cytosol. So that's the main difference between the ribosomes found inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the free ribosomes. The ribosomes in the ER basically create proteins that either leave that cell or end up being in the cell membrane. However, the proteins created by the free ribosomes stay in the cytosol. Now, what exactly is the difference between cytosol and cytoplasm? Because the two are sometimes confusing or confused. Basically, the cytoplasm is the region between the cell membrane and the nucleus, and the cytoplasm includes all the organelles and all the structures found between these two sections. So that includes the mitochondria, which we'll discuss next. That includes the ribosomes, the Golgi apparatus, the vesicles, our ER, and everything else in between the cell membrane and the nucleus. Now, the cytosol is not exactly the cytoplasm. The cytosol is basically the cytoplasm minus all the structures and organelles. So if we take out all the organelles between the cell membrane and the nucleus, we are simply left with the fluid region and the fluid is known as the cytosol. And the cytosol contains these free ribosomes that basically move about this entire fluid region. Now let's move on to the mitochondria. The mitochondria is a very important structure in the eukaryotic cell. The mitochondria in a way is like the nuclear power plant because it transforms one type of energy into a different type of energy that the cell can then use to help 
power different types of processes. So the mitochondria is the power plant of the cell. It breaks down molecules, biomolecules, and produces energy that can be harvested to power many different processes. Now, we'll discuss the details of the mitochondria organelle in a different lecture, but here we'll mention that it contains an outer layer as well as an inner membrane layer, and it also contains its own DNA and can actually undergo its own process of replication. It can undergo a process known as binary fission, and we'll discuss that in more detail in a different lecture. So this is is our mitochondria. It's the power plant of our cell. Now let's move on to our lysosomes, which are described by these two green vesicles here. So lysosomes are essentially specialized vesicles that contain hydrolytic enzymes. So that means inside the environment of our lysosome, we have a relatively low pH. It's about five. And these lysosomes basically help break down unwanted material inside the cell. Now let's move on to another type of specialized vesicle known as the peroxide. Peroxisome. The peroxisome are also known as microbodies, so very small bodies that contain that cell membrane and its own internal environment. So peroxisomes are specialized vesicles that create hydrogen peroxide, so H2O2, that break down fats as well as detoxify dangerous substances, especially in the liver found inside our bodies. So the cells in the liver of our body contain lots of peroxisomes because we have to break down different types of toxins that we ingest into our body, such as alcohol, for example. Now, let's move on to a region known as the centrioles. The centrioles is basically this region here. And the primary function of our centrioles is during cell division. So when the cell decides to divide, these basically help to separate the cell into two different cells. And, and finally, the last thing we want to discuss is this tail-like region here. This is known as our flagellum. Now, the flagellum is basically a structure that gives the cell motility. It gives the cell the ability to basically move. Now, both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have their own type of flagella that moves in its own way and is, and is composed of its own type of protein. We'll discuss that, uh, that when we focus on the flagella in a different lecture. Now, some other things that we should probably mention are glycosomes, which is another type of microbody. So plant cells also contain microbodies known as glycosomes, and the glycosomes also help to break down our lipids into some type of usable form of energy such as sugar. So the two types of microbodies are peroxisomes, which are found mostly in animal cells and, lysos and uh, glycosomes, which are found mostly in plant cells. Now, by the way, centrioles are only found in animal cells. They are not found in plant cells. And one other thing, one other organelle that plant cells have and animal cells do not have is the chloroplast. The chloroplast is basically the organelle that uses oxygen uh, and some type of carbon source, so CO2 and oxygen, or actually, no, it uses CO2 and water to create sugar molecules, and it releases oxygen into the atmosphere. That's the oxygen that we basically breathe in. So we can imagine that if our mitochondria is the nuclear power plant, the chloroplast is our solar power plant. It uses the energy that comes from sun Lie, and it combines carbon dioxide and water to form sugar molecules, usually starch. So basically these are the different types of organelles and structures that are found inside eukaryotic cells. And in the next series of lectures, we're going to discuss each one of these organelles in detail.